G'day folks. I had a few people ask how the Core i7 system is going and well it's not out here for repairs it's just out here for a quick dust clean out and inspection and so far everything's going perfectly like this thing is an absolute monster. I would like to throw another 16 gig of RAM in there just for the fun of it but overall I don't really have a game that will bring it to its knees. I mean I could put Minecraft on it and do something silly but yeah playing things like Dishonored Far Cry 3, um, all those games, absolutely amazing. I was ho hanging out for uh, Aliens Colonial Marines, but that turned out to be an absolute stinker. Like, horrible AI and gameplay, so I'm not going to be buying that one. I think the only, the only game I really enjoyed was AVP 2, and that was really good. But all the other ones have just been rubbish. So... Yeah, next one will have to be Bioshock Infinite. I'm not watching... I'm not even going to watch a review on it. That's how... I, w I generally watch reviews and things, or first impressions, as long as they're spoiler free. But, yeah. I've watched the first five minutes of gameplay, and I'm already hooked on it, so... I'm not going to watch any more gameplay on it. I'm just going to buy it when I get a spare $90 or whatever it is. So it won't be for a while, like quite a while. But I'll definitely get it. Um, don't know when I'll get it. I want to get the uh, RAV4 on the road soon. And $90 goes pretty far on uh, getting bits and pieces. Or at least part of the clutch done. So, yeah, games are going to take a bit of a back seat. Same with any expensive projects and things. But just so you know what's going on with the i7 computer. This thing is great. I'm not sure if I set the... Um, SSD up properly at the, to begin with though. Someone was saying I might have to reload Windows and everything. Uh, that's okay because all the important stuff's on the mechanical drive. But that's the next thing I'm going to look into. Like I have moved the um, radiator, you know, flipped the radiator so that any air bubbles that are in the system sit up at the uh, top tank there now. So there's no chance of the pump trying to pull air. Um, apart from that, there really isn't much else to comment on. I did change the the uh, default fan ramp up on that card and it's a lot better. It does rev up really fast upon boot up. As soon as it gets to windows it goes to 100% power and it sounds like a bloody uh, jet engine trying to take off but at least it's better than it cooking. And I'm guessing it's doing that because it, the drivers finally kick in properly and it's just realised it's been running at 100% output and these GPUs are up to like 60, 70 degrees. And that's why it was running hot when I first booted it up. Like, I couldn't keep my hand on it. Now, it's because there were no drivers, so by default it told it to run at full power. And without any kind of fan control, the fan was still idling, but the thing was pumping out heat like a bloody heat pump. Um, that's the only downfall of these cards. They do run hot. I haven't pulled it apart and redone the heat sink compound. That might be a good thing to do in future, assuming I'm... Yeah, just take out lots of screws, I guess, to dismantle that thing. But, yeah. If it's not too hard, I will pull it apart and redo the heat sink compound on it. But I think it needs an aftermarket cooler. And so far, I haven't found any that are satisfactory. So, hmm. Anyway, there's a bit of a ramble on the i7 system. It's an absolute beast. They can be done fairly affordable, affordably. I mean, you don't have to... If you've got old cards, like an older card than this, it'll still work. Um, all you really need is the RAM, CPU, mainboard, some kind of cooling system and a decent power supply. You don't need an SSD. The hard drive was cheap. One terabyte WD Black series are cheap. It's like literally a dollar a gigabyte or something. Well, sorry, um... No, we're not, we're not back 10 years ago. That was when it was a dollar a gigabyte. But now it's uh, literally $100 for a terabyte. So it's uh, pretty damn good value. And again, you don't have to go as crazy as I did with the main board and socket type. Um, I realise the 2011 is a uh, enthusiast grade high-end board and socket. And I could definitely stuff a much better processor into it, like an i7 Extreme. But... Again, it wasn't all that expensive. Like, yeah. Out of the whole build, I think the uh, TV was the most expensive part, my monitor. All up. This was just a bit here and there, and yeah. 
I don't know, it's worth it. I don't play many games, but I play them in style. I love the way it runs. Nice smooth frame rate. No big issues. Very fast load times. Uh, yeah, hopefully faster. If I got if I haven't got the SSD set up right at 8 gig a second or something or whatever it was, 8 or 16 gig a second, then uh, it should run even faster once I've done that quick reload and redo it all. But that's all right. Eventually, I'll get a proper top radiator. We'll piss this off. Actually, I think I've got to take the front off. It's all nice clipped together casing. Uh, that's a um, radiator mount in the top there, so I should be able to uh, buy a Corsair or something or other decent size water cooling setup and water cool both that and the graphics card. Maybe even make a uh, water manifold for the uh, north bridge there. Oh, sorry, south bridge. North bridge is integrated into CPU now. I've got to stop thinking of old computers. Yeah, that's the south bridge with the ASUS logo on it. North bridge is part of the CPU now. I keep getting confused about that. But anyway, there you go. It's a long-winded update. I've got cars and things that need attention, and uh, it's a lovely day outside, so I think I'll be spending the rest of the afternoon out here playing with my toys. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.